Welcome back, Seth Bling here. There's some pretty cool redstone behind Minecraft Tower Control, and so I wanted to do a quick video showing off some of it. If you haven't already seen Minecraft Tower Control, it's my PvP arena minigame, and you can check out the link from the video description, has a has a video link. But I want to do some of the redstone, specifically I'm going to talk about the tower, how that's done, and then also the sticker that says win at the end of the game. So let me start with the tower here. Uh, the way the tower works is by default neither team has captured the tower and it shows gold on one side iron on the other and this is the stuff that's connected to there's nothing up and when one of the team captures it by pressing the pressure plate say gold team captures it that thing will come up and the tower will have all gold in its, uh, in its midsection then if iron goes ahead and captures it, uh, all iron in the midsection, iron comes back up, gold can capture it again, same thing. And so that's what it does. And let me let me show you how it does it though. So first I'm going to need to get rid of all the nether brick. I'm just going to rip it out. And we can sort of see the redstone behind it. Let me... Soul sands... Yeah, so now we can sort of see that this glass isn't really necessary. It's going to kind of get in the way. So, um, yeah, I mean, basically what's happening is when you step on one of the pressure plates, it triggers a piston, depending on which pressure plate you stood on. And when one stack moves down, it causes the other stack to move up. And it also changes how the redstone signals get out. So take a look. Uh, the side under, under iron is up a little bit higher right now. When I step in the iron, the side under iron is now down, and the side under gold is up. And if I flip it back to gold, it goes back the other way. And I can actually show you from the side. Pressing the button is going to do the exact same thing that stepping on the pressure plate would do. So that one goes down, that one goes up, vice versa. And so this is a really cool way to get a signal down. It, it's a really compact way without having to run a redstone wire down a tower or something. And so what's going on is that when the when the column is down underneath one of the pressure plates, this signal is able to make it through. You can see it make it through it makes it through on this side, but it can't make it through on this side because it's it's glass on this side. So the signal makes it through and that's what causes this is the gold this is the gold one and so that causes it to go over to this and and raises those blocks. And it, we don't have a signal coming out on the iron side, and that's why the blocks aren't raised over here. So that's what the, so the, that's how the signal goes out. Uh, the thing that causes the other platform to raise is sort of a monostable circuit. And here's what I mean. When I step on the iron pressure plate, it's going to bring these blocks down, and this redstone is going to get powered. The first thing that's going to cause is it's going to cause this torch to turn off. And then a couple ticks later, this repeater will finally transmit the power from here to here. So first, when this gets powered, this will turn off, and then a couple ticks later, it'll turn the redstone back on. And so, since this, redsto this redstone is keeping this torch off, uh, what we'll see is when this blinks off, this torch will blink on, and that will cause this piston to get pushed up. So that's the piston under the gold block. So, once again, when we push down the iron, It'll cause the monostable circuit to momentarily push the piston on the gold side up. And so, if you take a look, uh, you watch watch this piston if you can. The piston down here as I press as I press the button. Oh, no, actually it's this one. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so now now watch this piston as I uh, if you can if I can get to a good angle. Might be hard. Okay, I think from here. <laughs> To get to the right angle, okay. So watch the piston down there. Uh, it might be really hard to see in the video, but you can you can sort of see it. And of course, you can download pist. Uh, sorry, you can download Minecraft Tower Control to actually dissect what's going on here in the redstone. And you can remove all the glowstone, whatever. It's not critical to the circuit. So it's sort of a rotationally symmetric thing that that's happening on both sides. That's why when one tower goes down, the other tower goes up, and that's what causes these guys to get to, res uh, to get uh, to get power and cause the effect for the team which has control of the tower. Now there's a couple of reset lines in here that will, when you want to restart the game, that will restart, reset the pistons. And basically it just causes both stacks to get pushed up. 
So there's a redstone line going into this piston, and there's another redstone line going into this piston. And if I just real quickly add in some things here, we can reset both pistons, and we can see that they get pushed up so that they're not aligned anymore. Now, what, the reason that it only shows one color at a time is is just it's very simple. Um, I mean, right now it's in the default position, like I was showing you before, where one side's iron, one side's gold, and when one of the teams captures the tower, it's gonna shift it. So, uh, I actually have it. It should be down by one, but but when you when you move one tower up, the other tower down, it's gonna it's gonna affect. Yeah, this should actually be one lower, something like that, and that. Yeah, because iron can control it. So now when gold gains control of it, it'll shift both. And so it, it shows every other row to indicate which one, which team currently has it. So that's pretty much how the tower works. And you can check it out for yourself. So the next thing I want to talk about is the win sticker that shows up when one of the team wins. I'm going to do it with the iron one here. Um, now if I press some buttons back here, I can make this win sticker go away. And that's what happens when you reset the game. It's not there anymore and let's push it back and this is a kind of neat way to show a message on a wall that was completely blank and it might be kind of unexpected that you would show a message on a wall like this so in order to show you uh, what's going on I'll get rid of some of the nether brick and so now you can sort of see back into the circuitry what's going on um, so as you can tell from looking at it anywhere that there's iron out here there is a piston, sticky piston, that's extended and attached to that iron. So we have a row going down for the W's. We can kind of see it down here. A little bit hard to see. Uh, but basically what's going on with this thing is there all of the all this redstone is powered, which is keeping these pistons extended. When this redstone loses power, it's gonna pull back all of those iron blocks. And after that, um, say I want to reset it back to nether brick. After it pulls back the iron blocks, it'll be in line with all of this nether brick here. And so if this line of pistons extends, it will push all of the iron that's just been retracted because it'll be in line with, with that nether brick. And then with the, when the pistons extend again, it will uh, it'll extend and push the nether brick rather than the iron. So it's a lot of talking. Let me let me show you what I'm talking about, though. So, in order to demonstrate, I'm going to create a little redstone line here that uh, that I can sort of press over the wall. Okay. And so now, if you watch what happens, pulls back the iron, pushes the entire thing over, and then pushes back where the iron was. And so now we have nether brick in the wall. If the rest of the wall was made of nether brick instead of glass, like it was before, it would just look like a blank wall, just like this area here, even though there's all this redstone behind it. And then let me uh, let me do something similar for this thing, so I can show you what happens when it pushes it back. some redstone and so now it's going to retract that nether brick it's going to push the iron back into place where it was before and then it'll push extend the pistons again so it retracts and pushes pretty cool um, you'll notice that this works because wherever there's an iron next to it there's a nether brick in this sort of wall thing Oops. It's in this wall and so if, if there were if there if I needed the pattern to include any iron next to an iron horizontally, it wouldn't quite work because when you push the blocks over by one it would still be iron in that spot. But it works for this pattern because I don't have any of those. And so that's a that's how you get a pretty cool effect to to write a message in a wall using a block swapper like this, a large block swapper. So hopefully you learned some new stuff about redstone and some new tricks. And thanks for watching.